and welcome to Learning Music with Pat. Now I've been showing you various instruments. I think last segment I went over the penny whistles and before that I went over recorders. I want to continue today with the Sasuto flutes. I brought a number of them in, but before I do that, I just want to show you a couple of charts I have here about these instruments that I call the melody instruments. I call melody instruments those instruments that aren't like a saxophone or a clarinet, but at the same time they're like they are instruments, but they're kind of in a class by themselves. They are like the flutophones and the recorders and and the sasutos, penny whistles, and that kind of instrument. I lump them together and I call them the melody instruments. You can play with some of them, a lot of really good music on them, some of them not so much, but they're all legitimate instruments. So I wanna show you this particular chart. I have a couple of charts to show you. Now, we're gonna focus today on the sasuto flute, and this is a sasuto flute, spelled S-A-S-U-T-O, S-A-S-U-T-O. And most of them are all black, so it's very hard to get, you know, sometimes I take them into a photocopy place and actually try to photocopy them so you can get a good picture of them. But this is what it is, all black, and it says sasuto here. And by the way, the sasutos are American-made instruments. Most people think of them as being Japanese, but they're not. They're American instruments. Now this, to go back to the chart here, is a penny whistle. I brought them in last segment, different sizes, different shapes, different keys, different colors. Here's the recorder. Uh, this is the, um, well, let's see, the, I can't even remember the name of it. This is a song flute right here. This is very similar to the song flute. And then this is the flutophone. Uh, and then this is a regular instrument there. This is a tonette. I don't know why that skipped my mind, but that is a tonette. The tonette, the song flute, the flutophone, and there are a lot of instruments like these. They're just regular little woodwind instruments. You bl blow in them and they have the holes in the front. I have shown you the penny whistles and the recorders. I have brought in the tonettes and the song flutes, and this is the flutophone. I've had them all in, but just for you to, to get so that you can distinguish between them. And uh, I'm going to show you another chart. Penny whistle and sasuto, just so you get the fact. The sasuto is really, in a sense, a type of penny whistle. That's what they are. But the, they work about the same way. A lot of these instruments work about the same way. They blow about the same way. The, the mouthpieces are all similar but not exactly the same. So I want to show you the sasuto, so I'm gonna switch over here to that, since I brought a few of them in, and I'll show you, I've got uh, five or six of them that I wanna show you. Here's one in the key of C. The ones that I have, with the exception of one, is all black, and this is it. If you look on the back side of it, there are no tone holes. That does make a difference in the pitch. If you look at the top, you can see the back of the mouthpiece more clearly, and I, I want you to see that because it goes up, and then there's a little ridge. If I put it this way, there's a little ridge. You might or might not be able to see it, but there's a little opening there. That's good, I think you've got it. That's what you blow into. It's similar to a recorder mouthpiece, but not exactly the same. So this is it, the mouthpiece of the sasuto. Nothing on the back, no, no tone holes on the back, and in the front, you have all of the tone holes in the front. I'm not sure you'll be able to pick up any of that because it's all black, and it, it, things that are black, it's very hard to pick up. And this is it. Well, what does it sound like? They have a beautiful tone. I use the sasutos a lot. And the C, this is in the key of C, I use this most of all when I'm using it because it has a wonderful tone and it blends in. The finger stretches out too much. It can play all kinds of music. It has a two octave range. So this is in the key of C. 
And the next one I'm going to show you is going to be in the key of B flat. It is a little larger. The finger stretches are a little bit greater, so it's a little bit harder to play. Now I've got all my fingers on the tone holes in the front. It's the same in the back. There are no tone holes. You have this mouthpiece. It's the same kind of mouthpiece with just a little ridge that you blow into. The labium is in the front. The C had a labium, too. The recorders have them. All of those little instruments do have them. you can't do is get it get, it has more or less a two octave range but you can't force it I'm gonna try I don't think I'm gonna get it I did but that's about the range in, in the B flat now the next one I'm going to show you, I'm sorry, is uh, I've got another B flat. I've got two of them, but it's the same thing. Um, I have a couple of A's. This is longer. It's harder to play because of the fact that it, it does, uh, it has longer finger stretches, as you can see. What I did once, I have two in the key of A, and what I did once is I took and I pulled out these instruments, you can pull them apart, and I pulled it apart for the purpose of making it into an A flat, because I didn't have an A flat instrument. I had the A, but no A flat. And A flat instruments are hard to get, so I just jury rigged it. You can pull the whole thing off you know, to clean it, and I just pulled it off as far as it would go without dropping off, and I taped it in place, and I got it to the point where it could play A flat. It could play in the key of A flat, because as you know, I've said before, the longer the tube, the lower the pitch, and an A flat is going to be one half step below an A, and so therefore, if I could just pitch it one half step down, then I would be able to play an A flat. And that's what I did. I kept it like that for months and months and months. But the problem is when you're playing an instrument and it's playing in a key that it's not meant to play in, some of the notes aren't exactly true. You can get some notes in the key of A flat and they sound perfectly normal in the key of A flat, but not all of them. There are some of the uh, tones that would be slightly off pitch because this instrument wasn't made to play in anything except an A. Now it is true, and I need to point it out to you, you can play more than one key with these instruments, like the recorder. The recorder that I'm using in here, more or less they play in the key of C, but they can also play in the key of G, in the key of F, in the key of B flat. And I've done that numerous times and nobody would ever know the difference. I fudge on the fingerings a little. I sometimes make up fingerings a little, but it can be done. But there are some instruments, even though they're tunable, they're made in such a way that if you play and change the key, some of them don't do so well, or they do well on some notes, but they don't do well on other notes. So this is the A, occasionally made into a B flat, I mean an A flat. Um, so those are basically them, but I have one more Sasuto that's interesting to see that's not black, and this is it. It's large. Take a look at this. This is a Sasuto that's called a low D Sasuto, and it's white. No tone hole on the back. It's made just like any of the other ones, but you see it's quite large. And the tone holes are so stretched out uh, in the front, and you can see them because this is a white instrument. If you can, if you can come in on the uh, tone holes, I don't know if you can do that or not, but see how large they are. This one here is almost big, yeah, good, that's good. That's almost big enough to swallow your finger. The one ahead of it, the one on top of it, is small. 
they're more or less the same size, but you get down here and you get this humongous tone hole. And it should be played with um, this finger. This is your middle finger, and of course your middle finger is, is heavier. It's wider, so it accommodates that. And you don't have, I could not put from here to here, to put my middle finger here, and then to use this finger, well, I can't stretch it that far. There's just no way I can do it. It's very much like the uh, low D uh, penny, uh, penny whistle that I brought in. This is a Sasuto, but if you remember last, last uh, meeting that we had, I brought this in. It's a low C penny whistle. So you've got the low C penny whistle, and you've got the low D Sasuto. And they're about the same size. The penny whistle is a little bit smaller, but they're about the same size. They play in the same key. They have the same kind of tone, except I think that the penny whistle is a better tone, and I'm gonna just uh, play enough tone so you can hear what it sounds like. This is a Sasuto. It's a very nice uh, tone. It's not hard to play in the sense that you can get air into it easily. It plays tones easily. Compare it now uh, to the penny whistle. I think the penny whistle has a better tone. I don't think there's any question about that. But they do, they're both low D, they're both in the same key, and they both play the same kind of way. It is a Sasuto. So why do I want to show you all of these different instruments? They're all instruments that are used. They're real instruments, um, and they're not toys. They're regular instruments. I want to do some comparisons now. I'm going to take my recorder, and I'm going to play a note. This is in the key of C, and I'm going to play a note on it. Now I'm going to take a, a, a penny whistle, and I'm going to, it's in the same key, it's in the key of C, play the same fingering in order to play this so I would match it with the recorder, I would have to pitch it up one step. That would fit. So on the recorder, I played a G, and I'll do that again. I played a G on the recorder. It's a fairly simple note to get. And I play in the same key with the same fingering on this instrument here, which is a penny whistle. It's one step below. But if I play that same note on the D penny whistle, which is smaller, you will guess that it pitches back up. So what's happening? I can play this G with the same fingering on a penny whistle. It will match the recorder, but it's in the key of D. If I play the one in the key of C, it pitches down a step. Well, if you look at, and I just want you to see this for a minute, if you look at this keyboard, you'll find that the C is lower than the D. You have a D which is higher. Now, when you play the penny whistle with those same fingerings, since it doesn't have a tone hole in the back, it pitches down a step. So what you end up is playing the same thing as a C. You see, if you, let's look at, a, an, at another octave. Here's a C, D. The scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So this is C. D is one step up, but it pitches one step down. So if you're using the same fingering, then it's going to be the same as the C. So I can play this, and the tones will be the same as the recorder, uh, but not so if I use it in the same key as the recorder. I hope this is making sense to you. There are accommodations that you have to make on an instrument 
to make sure that they fit. If you're playing in an orchestra, and I've had recorder orchestras, and I've been in them, and I've also taught children to play in them, if anyone comes in with a penny whistle, it's not going to pitch, as a general rule, the same as the recorder. So if you're playing a solo or something, you just accommodate that. You just write the music out differently. And if you looked at the fingering charts, the fingerings would be different because of the way that the instrument is pitched. So that's nothing to be concerned about. It's just the way that it is. If I were to pay, play that uh, same G on a flutophone, and I'm going to try it on the recorder again, <coughs> it matches. But you've got to remember that the flutophone has a tone hole in the back, same as the recorder does. Now, some instruments with, with tone holes in the back, they don't pitch you know, any better than what a penny whistle would, even though they have the hole in the back. It's just, you just learn to accommodate uh, as you're going along. Um, you want, I wanted to mention also the difference between the mouthpieces. I'm working on a segment, I haven't finished with it yet, uh, on the mouthpieces. This is a record of fipple mouthpiece. This is what it's called. And to play the fipple mouthpiece with a fipple mouthpiece, it's pretty simple. I wish, in a sense, that more instruments could use a fipple mouthpiece because they are so simple. You put it in your mouth about one third of the way. You put your your top teeth on the instrument, and of course your lip is in front of it, but not covering the teeth. And for the lower lip, you cover your lip, you cover your lower teeth with the lip. And so your teeth don't rest directly on the instrument, but your lower lip does. That kind of arrangement is pretty similar in all of the instruments that have this kind of mouthpiece. It's called a fipple mouthpiece. If you look at the flutophone, it's very, very similar. You put it in your mouth about a third of the way, and you, you play it the same way. If you do it with a penny whistle, it's the same thing, the same kind of mouthpiece. It's plastic. It has a labium. It has a little place where you blow in. Your teeth go on the front of it. Your lower, t your lower lip goes over your teeth on the bottom, and you play it the same way. It's the same thing. So there's a lot of similarity with, this, with the Sasuto, it's the same thing. The same kind of mouthpiece, it may be shaped a little differently, it may, may sound a little different, but the basics are the same, which makes woodwinds a fascinating group of instruments because there's so much you can transfer from one to another. Now, we're not talking about reeded instruments like clarinet, saxophones, oboes, and bassoons. They all have reeds, so that's going to be somewhat different. I'm talking about the mouthpieces that are like fipple mouthpieces, which most of these melody instruments have. The other thing I want to point out to you in terms of the mouthpiece is the fact that a fife, this is a fife, and the difference in the mouthpiece, it's not like a fipple mouthpiece. It is a round circle, and you blow across it like you do a flute. So that's a fife. And they play a lot the same way. But this you have to hold up, because when you were playing across it, you have to hold it up. There are the end-blown flutes, and I'm going to bring those in in, in a couple of weeks, um, in which you have a little, little kind of uh, opening and you blow across it, but it doesn't really have like a mouthpiece, like a fipple mouthpiece. So what I'm trying to do is get a class together showing you all the different types of mouthpieces, including the reeded instruments, and how they look and how they play, because there are differences, but there's also an awful lot of similarities. So I, I think probably what I ought to do is uh, close it for now because um, I don't have any time to start anything new. So we'll close it here, and uh, next time I'll be showing you the conical instruments, so please join me then.